With an issue as controversial as this, it, it, it really surprises me that no NGO or capacity building organisation has actually come into this area and said, what are the issues that we're looking at? We're looking at mining, we're looking at the road, we're looking at, at eco-tourism, and said, let's look at the pros and cons of all of them. Let's, let's give you the information that you as a community need so that you can make an informed decision. It seems the debate is happening up here and the people on the ground are actually being alienated, marginalized, and aren't really part of this decision-making process. Standing here on the banks of the Mzamba River Gorge on the Pondoland Wild Coast, on the other side of the gorge is the Sagidi community and the beginning of the Tolobani mineral sand. Samson Gumpe has inspired his people to take a stand against developments imposed from above. Mm. Five years ago, they were intimidated and harassed. Nontle and Mzamo had lost their jobs in ecotourism. Would you be scared to stand up and say, I don't like this mining? Yeah, people are very scared. Like around Tolobeni, most of the people, they, they've kept quiet now. South African civil society mobilised against the mining and things started to change. We spoke to John Clark, a social worker with Sustaining the Wild Coast, who's been part of this process. Well, as far as the mining is concerned, the community regarded as history and they're planning for an eco-tourism future without it. The minister did allow the mining company 90 days to pull the fat out the fire. We have not been copied on any correspondence to indicate whether they've actually met, met any requirements there. So we're working on the assumption that they are lapsed and that uh, we can start planning for what really should have been happening 10 years ago. But what about the toll road? Is, is this not a setback? Well, six years ago, if Minister van Skalkberg had actually rejected the appeals against the first proposal, it would have been a huge setback. Because at that stage, the, the fight was very much about environmentalists from outside, concerned about the endeme endemic plants. But given the mining experience over the last five years, we've seen a community that's really empowered themselves by accessing their constitutional rights, freedom of expression, access to information. And I wouldn't like to be on the other side, I promise you. The coastal community of uh, Tolobin along the coast, they are opposed to the toll road because they see it as bringing mine. Whilst the people who are inland, they want, they're in support of the toll road because they see an opportunity for a better road. Of course, because the current state of roads uh, has not been upgraded, but they are concerned about the lack of, of, of consultation by Sandra. But John, as a social worker, surely this infrastructure helps with access to, uh, to social services and, uh, and to jobs? Interestingly, I worked for the World Health Organization for three years and we found that the road infrastructure of Southern Africa was actually one of the reasons why we have such a huge HIV AIDS incidence. The road had became a vector for the spread of HIV AIDS. So we must stop thinking of development as simply about infrastructure. But there are enormous problems in the Eastern Cape. Uh, I can understand that mining is harmful, but uh, the road must surely act as a, a big solution to the unemployment problem. Big so problems are not solved by big solutions. They are solved by very many small, tailored, human-scale solutions. Durban, Joburg, Pretoria and now Cape Town City residents all have gripes with Sunroll over toll roads. Sunroll CEO Nazir Ali argues that they are an important redistribution mechanism to address historical inequalities. We thought we'd go and have a chat to some of the Sagidi community members to see what they felt. The development is supposed to start from the people, not from the, the government. <laughs>
Ifunu kushwa na nafunu menu ya shikana na lente denza ngayo. Agiwa ntele befanda, uweza ngayo, njoba tina si baba andu, lente lo lente la spila ngayo, pima pondwe. We have a right to know. That's why uh, now we are not sneaking and we have a, a, a freedom of expression. I get the sense that history is being made here on the Eastern Cape Wild Coast and seeing a historically disadvantaged rural community taking their destiny into their own hands simply by invoking their constitutional rights. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you